So I, I've been asked to speak a little bit about, about the eager community of which I am a member and been a member for many years. And I would say that as a psychotherapist, first and foremost, the uh, most uh, important aspect of being involved in the eager group is that people are clinically focused. They are focused on the dilemmas of being human and particularly the dilemmas of being a traumatized human being or, or traumatized in childhood and trying to figure out how we can best help people both in terms of neurofeedback and the agility of a neurofeedback system, as well as psychotherapy, EMDR, um, and bringing those things together. And it feels to me that it's unique about Eager that um, it has been informed in its entire lifetime. Uh, in its, the development of the software has been informed by therapists. Um, and by the idea of arousal and of changing the arousal, the pitch and flow of the arousal in the nervous system rather than correcting the EEG. And that is language and understanding that's available to a therapist and that is that you feel company with within the eager community. So I recommend it. <laughs> I highly recommend it. And the system is uh, pretty user friendly. So that helps too. But it's more the, 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 the surround, the clinical surround of the people that are in the eager community. That's, um, th that is, is unique, I think, in the field, that these are all clinicians and clinically, for the most part, clinically sophisticated people working with some of the most disastrous uh, human conditions that uh, people are plagued with. So in terms of what I, what I like and appreciate about the eager community, I think the thing that I've been most appreciative over the years in this community is the openness within the community. And there's not really an ideology that, that pervades the community. It's much more one of exploring and sharing and openness, uh, which I think has helped to develop varieties of pro approaches that are uh, conducive for incorporation by different therapists who may have different views of, um, of psychology and those kinds of um, issues for for people so it, it's like when we do our meeting um the neurofeedback interchange conference people's willingness to give their time to share what they've discovered for other practitioners to be able to adopt and then come back and share what they discover is really promoted rapid growth uh, among different uh, experience levels for practitioners. So I, I think that has always been the biggest thing. And then as I think about what are the origins of that, I think about Howard Lightstone and how he's approached this in terms of listening to clinicians, listening to their experience, listening to their desires, and then adapting the software to accommodate those things more so than all the practitioners having to accommodate to the software. So between those, uh, between the community and then the developers, I think it's led to this organic process that's been healthier than a, uh, than a, a more mechanical process for doing neurofeedback and certainly makes it more approachable and engageable by the typical clinician. And then uh, one of the things that I think uh, that I've always told people who are asking me about getting involved in the field, that if, they, if they're looking for an encouraging and nurturing family environment, the eager community certainly provides that in much stronger ways than I've experienced in other uh, neurofeedback communities. 
and that's not, I don't think that's an accident. I, I think that's been actively encouraged by the people involved uh, for the, the, the long-term community 